Welcome to Sib Spot. Today's Reddit stories are from Petty Revenge. Story one is by Corporate Shark Bait. This is another laundry story. I really like the laundry story from the last episode I did, and I wanted to read more about people getting back at people, so I had to include this one. Stranger put their clothing in with ours. Didn't think I'd have a good enough petty story, but this happened a few hours ago. Mild revenge. Put laundry in an apartment complex washing machine and went to do errands, assuming they would be ready for the dryer when we got back. Came back to see the washer we swore we started says it has 30 minutes left. Odd. Turned out someone who had a small handful of underwear and shirts decided on the bright idea of mixing their laundry in with ours and rerunning the cycle. Ended up sorting through the soaking wet pile to find ours, strained the water back into the machine, and threw their clothing back into the water with the lid open so it won't run. If we have to now run two dryer cycles since someone decided on this brilliant plan, we can at least delay them getting their clothing done longer. We did think about even more petty options like putting their clothing outside, but Complex has cameras outside so we decided against that. I don't think that people running a laundromat like this would do anything to your clothes if somebody put their stuff in the washer with yours. But at least you didn't cut up their stuff or something like they have in other episodes. Down on the replies by JD the Jerk. Long ago as a young sailor, I was doing laundry one weekend. The laundromat was conveniently beside a bar. During my drying cycle, someone threw in several nice sets of working uniforms to dry with mine. I got to them before him and was driving off when he chased me out of the parking lot. Same size as me, I put on new name patches and didn't need new ones for a few months. Lol. Why else would they put their clothes in your dryer but to donate them to you? Underneath that by a wild gamer appeared 25. Heck yeah! Free clothes! And JD the jerk replied again and said, Free uniforms. Dungarees weren't cheap for a 19-year-old... E2 with just under a year in. As I recall, it was a paycheck's worth. Not that it was much in 79. Lol. They obviously just wanted you to have that stuff. That's why they put it in your machine. Our next story is by I Nom Nom Awesome. I reported my annoying neighbor until he moved. I just want peace and quiet and to be left alone. I'm in my late 20s and live alone, and I really hate kids. My neighborhood is a group of separate houses without yards that are spaced close to each other. I've lived here for five years by myself, and it's perfect. Everything I've ever wanted. No yards to take care of, and no kids around making noise. The houses share a large T-shaped cement driveway, and none of us has ever interacted with each other. We come and go stay quiet, and mind our own business. There's a small park down the street with grass for those who want it, literally a 30-second walk away. About a year ago, a guy with lots of little kids moved into my neighborhood. As always, I just drove past him like everyone else and closed my garage and never spoke to him. No problem. Over time, he started making himself at home. He would park his large truck in the motor court, which has a sign saying it's illegal because it's a fire lane. It would block his neighbor's garage across from him. He would set up lawn chairs in front of his neighbor's garage and have the little kids out there running and screaming right in front of people's houses and garages. So we would have to listen to it and then try not to run over the little children as we back our cars out of the garages. He would rev his motorcycle at 8 a.m. on a Saturday and wake up the entire neighborhood. When his kids would be blocking the driveway, they'd take their sweet time moving. Because of this, I did one simple thing. When I would come home every day and drive past and around them, I wouldn't wave back when he waved at me. Oh, how that hurt his pride. He should have left it at that, but no, he had to press the issue. So he started waving more, and then shouting at me as I drove past and then telling his kids to stop and stand and wave at me as I drove past and ignored them all. Until, eventually, he didn't like how I drove around his kids that were in the way, even though I always drive at a safe, slow speed there. 
so he tried to confront me. He shouted at my car. Then he came to my garage as I was already getting out of the car and had the garage door closing, so it closed right in his face without me ever looking at him, laughing my butt off. He didn't like that, so he immediately walked around to my front door, saw that I had a doorbell camera, and turned around and walked away. A couple days later, coming home, he was crossing the driveway as I arrived, and because he had told the kids to stop and wave at me, this guy stopped in the middle. So he stood in my way to block my car while trying to get the kid to move, and so I honked for three seconds right in his face until he moved. That was our last interaction, and I decided he's annoyed me enough. I live in an HOA. I don't actually care about any of the rules, but I decided to use them all to report him endlessly for every violation I knew of, using my dash cam on my car for screenshots with evidence. His parking in the motor court stopped after they gave him a ticket. He had to throw out the child's playhouse that he'd set up next to his garage. I kept reporting him for having an open garage door that I don't actually care about in order to get him to have to stop hanging out in the motor court and, oh, I don't know, use his brain and take the kids down the street to the park. Only four months of reporting him repeatedly and he just moved out. There are some neighbors that like to interact with and be super friendly and chatty with their neighbors, and there's some that don't. And this neighbor should have realized you're one of those people who don't want to do anything with their neighbors. They have their friends, they have their acquaintances, you do not have to be one of them just because you live next to them. That being said, I can't imagine that if I were in this situation I wouldn't do the exact same thing. It seems like there's so many people out there that think that if you don't acknowledge them, that you hate them. When they really should just say, they don't acknowledge me, they don't want anything to do with me, and that's okay. But to some people that's not okay, and it will just cause more problems. A couple people who are neighborly introverted decided to comment down below. Cool name here 69 said, I've lived next to my neighbor for eight years. I don't even know his name. We're cool though. We did a head nod about six months ago. Great guy. Underneath that by Zwan Wu, my previous neighbor was an old guy I lived next to for nearly half a decade before he sold up and moved. Only spoke like three times to ask me to dump my lawn clippings over his fence so he could use it in his garden. Effing champion. For the kinds of people who'd want to come home from a day of pretending to be social and interacting with everybody, this is perfect for them. They don't even have to do anything but nod to each other once every six months, or interact once every few years. Our last story by Martin Minnie. Queue jumpers kicked back in a different queue. I worked in IT as a service desk engineer, and we have a limited time window where we can get our food and eat during lunch, 12 o'clock to 1 o'clock. It's always pretty busy in the cafeteria, so we plan it accordingly. Other co-workers don't have this time constraint. This is important to the story. Everyone starts their lunch around 12, so that's the time to avoid. We wait until 12.30 in the hopes that we have a smaller queue to order. On this day, this was not the case. It was a long queue, and it took a long while for the kitchen staff to get all orders out. I was waiting in line, as you should, and a few people walked in and saw someone near the front of the line that they wanted to talk to. Fine by me as long as you take your place in queue once you're done. But they did not. They kept talking to each other and queued along. They ordered, got their food, and left. When it was my turn, I only had ten minutes left to wait for my meal and get back to my desk. I was eventually forced to eat at my desk, even though it's not allowed, and serve co-workers during my lunch. It's the end of the summer holiday, so it's pretty busy. A while later, we received a ticket from one of the queue jumpers. Of course, they changed their prio to urgent, even though it was far from urgent from our point of view. We decided to put them on hold until the end of the day, at least, and continued to work on other tickets, less urgent and more urgent. It's maybe a very small victory, but since people want us to call on their every whim, it's fun to actually block someone once in a while. Good petty revenge, OP. I can't stand queue jumpers. I'm not the confrontational type. I'm not somebody who likes to get in fights. 
I probably would say something nowadays, but I don't know. It depends on where I am if I'd say something or not. Our stories for today have come to a close. Until we meet again, have a perfect day. <laughs>